Now here we have again <coughs> two charges and another one that we're going to bring and measure the force on that charge at different points along that line that you see there. So when I, uh, this is animation one, let me put it here. So you're going to see here that when I move that charge, The force on it is just completely vertical and it grows. When I move it away, the force goes down, but it remains vertical. So the question is, what kind of charges do I have in this problem? What is the charge of this top one and what is the charge of this bottom one? What kind of charges would uh, result in a force on the red particle that points that way? It's always assumed that this red particle is positive. Okay. So the force on the red particle, as before, is going to be due to the sum of two vectors, right? The vector force due to the top particle and the vector force due to the bottom particle. So in which directions could those vectors be pointing? Think about the possible combinations. Both of the charges positive, both of the charges negative, or one positive, one negative, or one negative, one positive, and see in what direction you will get those vectors to point, right? <coughs> For example, suppose that this charge here was positive and that this charge here was positive. I'm not saying anything about their magnitude, but let's see if, it, if that could work by, the, by having some magnitudes equal or different or whatever. So if this charge is positive, what would be the force acting on the particle when it's here? Due to this one over here. The vector force will be pointing that way. It will be pushing it away. And the vector force coming from this particle will be pushing it that way. Could those two vectors possibly uh, have a x component that is zero, which is what we're seeing, right? That's impossible. They would never, the x component would never cancel. So that doesn't work. Positive and positive doesn't work. You could try, let me see if I can. So the point where I touch on the screen is one inch away from what it actually does. This is extremely tricky. Uh, erased, OK. So what happens if, what would happen if this was, uh, the top one was negative and the bottom one was negative also. So, so the attract, there will be an attractive force with the red one. It will be attracted to both of them. So there will be a vector force pointing that way and a vector force pointing that way, attracted to both charges. The net force would definitely have a x component, correct? So that wouldn't work either. So now we uh, come to the conclusion that it's going to have to be one positive and one negative. Right? Does that make sense so far? So let's try that. Let's say that the uh, upper one is positive and that the bottom one is negative. So positive for the upper, negative. So what would be the force due to the top one? The top one will be pushing the charge, the red charge, that way. And the negative one, the bottom one, will be attracting it. Would that work? Well, in the x, if you look at the x components, yes, it would cancel the x component of one, would be canceled by the x component of the other one. But notice that both have a negative uh, y component. And what we have, those red arrows here, are the net force is pointing up. So that doesn't work, but we're getting close because now we can cancel the x component of the, of the forces. <clears throat> so we just change the signs and the top one is going to be negative and the bottom one is going to be positive. And we should be good. Did I say negative for the top one? Yeah, and positive for the bottom one. So negative for the top one would give you a force at that point that points that way. And positive charge at the bottom will give you a force at that point that points this way. And that should do the trick. Because when you add 
that vector with this vector, your resulting vector goes that way, right? And the closer you are to the two charges, the bigger that vector is because these, both of these vectors are bigger. Right? If you're here, <coughs> one vector is really big and the other one is really big, so the sum is very big. So that does have the behavior that we've seen there. Okay? So from this animation, you will conclude that <coughs> the, um, the charges are one is negative, the other one's positive. Now, what would happen if one is negative and the other one's positive, but the magnitude is not the same? Would that work? If this one is negative, let's say Q, and this one's 2Q. This one's minus Q, and this one's 2Q. Could I still get the vector, the net force acting in the third particle to point vertical at all points along that line? <coughs> you cannot, because when you're moving on this line, you are at the same distance from the two charges. Right? That means that the vectors, the length of these vectors is going to be dependent exclusively on how big are those charges, right? If I want the x component of this one to cancel the x component of the other one, those vectors are going to have to be exactly the same length. Otherwise, they will not cancel. So if those vectors are the same length, that implies, because the distance from here to here is the same as from here to here, that implies the charges have to be the same, right? So we do have the answer for the animation one is that the charge on the top should be negative, and the charge at the bottom should be a uh, positive and equal magnitude. Okay, so this is minus, it should be minus Q, and this one should be positive Q. That would be the only way to get that behavior. Let's do another animation, number two. Now, when I move around the red particle, notice what happens to the force. It remains pointing along the x-axis. It just gets bigger and bigger. And if I move it away, the arrow uh, gets smaller and smaller. Of course, it's always in front of the red one because we're talking about the force on the red particle. But the distance between the red particle and the top of the arrow is decreasing as you move away. And as you move it this way, the distance increases. So that tells you the magnitude of the force is getting bigger and bigger, but pointing along the x-axis. So what, is the, what are the charges that are responsible for that? Yeah? So they would both be positive. That's right. That would work because then the force of the top one The force due to the top one will be pointing this way. And the force due to the bottom one will be pointing that way. And when you add those two vectors, you get a vector, a net force that points this way. And the charges have to be equal in magnitude, right? Because the distances are the same. This distance is the same as this distance. So in order to have the x, y component of this one cancel the y component of the bottom one, those two vectors have to have the same magnitude. If they are to have the same magnitude, the charges must be the same because the distance is the same. Okay, so for this one, the answer will be plus Q and plus Q. And that, be that cancellation happens, of course, everywhere along the x-axis. And uh, animation three, the last one of this set. So if I move this around, notice what happens to the force vector. It becomes small and small. That's what you would expect from Coulomb's law. As you get closer, it grows and grows. But the direction is kind of strange. Not strange, but it's not in the x or y. <coughs> so what are those charges? We don't need an exact number, but we need to uh, figure out if it's positive, negative, and if one is bigger than the other one.
Which one do you think is bigger, Q1 or Q2? Q1. And what are the signs? Can they both be positive? That would be impossible, right? If both were positive, then you would have a vector that points more like this, and the other one would point somewhere like that, right? There would not be a X component that is negative, which is what you have, right? So that's not going to work. What about both negative? Could that work if they were both negative? Let's try that. Let's say that the force, the top one is negative, so the force points towards that charge. And the force of the bottom one, we said, is negative, so it would be attractive, so it points this way. Right? So it does have an X component that is negative, but the Y component doesn't seem to work very well because they're fighting against each other. If one has a positive X com uh, Y component, the other one has a negative Y component. And notice that the particles, the force on the red particle has a big uh, Y component, which is bigger than the Y component that it would have if the bottom particle was not there. You see that? So. So we said negative and negative, right? Negative and negative, that doesn't seem to work. The negative on top seems to produce the force going to the left, so that's good. But we need to move that vector up, right? Add to that vector something that will bring it up. So how can we do that? We decided that that one should be OK. But let's try positive here then. So let's say that Q2 is positive. Does that have the behavior that we're seeing? So the vector between uh, the force between Q1 and, and the test particle would be pointing in that direction because it's attractive. Now Q2 is positive, right? So the vector is repulsive. Could be something like this, right? And when you add those two vectors, what do you get? The sum, as you know, you put one vector after the other. And this is the net. F net. That seems to work. That would do the trick, right? That's exactly what is, uh, the net force is doing. All right? So from this animation, you can conclude that the top particle is going to have to be negative, and the bottom one is going to have to be positive. But you know also about the magnitudes. What are the magnitudes? Could they be the same magnitude? We already covered the case when, they, when their magnitudes are the same. What did the net force look like? It was completely vertical, right? So this vector and this vector cannot be the same magnitude, which would be the case if the two charges are the same. Then this would be as big as the other one. This one would be as big as the other one, and then you would have a net field pointing vertical. That's what we had in the previous animations. We don't have that, right? So that means that this vector over here, I'm going to put it in red, this is going to have to be bigger than this. This is going to have to be bigger than this. Okay. So what, that, what does that tell you? That Q1 in magnitude is going to have to be bigger than Q2. Or you wouldn't have that kind of behavior. Right? <coughs> Is that all right? Make sense? OK. So in this problem, we have two charges inside. <laughs> it's showing you the answer already. I, don't, I think it's because of the resolution of the screen. It's somehow stretch part of the problem and 
Anyway, let's see what happens to the red particle when you move it around. So there is supposed to be hidden two hidden particles inside the gray square. And you're supposed to figure out where those particles are. They could be the uh, red one could be here and the blue one here, or it could be here and here. You already see the answer to this problem. But, uh, so I, just, I can just move the test charge around and see what is the force acting on the test one. Right? And from that, conclude where the charges are. So if I put the test charge near this corner, you see that the total force is repulsive. Okay? So if the test charge is positive, in this corner I should have a positive charge. Right? So that the net force is repulsive. If I move it to the other corner, then the uh, net force will be attractive because the uh, negative charge at the corner is closer to your test charge. So that attracts and the other one repels, but the attraction is bigger but because you're closer to the blue one, which, is, which provides the attractive force. Right? And if you put this charge near uh, one of the corners, near this corner, then uh, the force points this way. We saw that in one of the previous animations, right? If you are along this line, and this is positively charged, and this is negatively charged, if you are sitting here, right, and there is a charge here that is positive and a charge here that is negative, then uh, your force would have two vectors, one vector pointing this way, the other vector, vector pointing this way, and your net force points this way, right? So that is perfectly consistent with positive charge here, negative charge here. If you're on this side, right, then the repulsive force points this way with the positive one, the attractive force with the negative charge here points that way, and when you add them, you get this net force. Okay, so that's what you see in the animation. When you're here, it points that way. When you're here, it's back to pointing the same way. Repulsive here, attractive here. Okay, so that will be a way to figure out which charge or how are those charges placed inside that region which is supposed to be covering it. <coughs> All right?